Hey, good morning, Mountain Movers Church. We're so glad you're joining us today. We have a special online-only service today that we're calling Families and Jammies. Kinsley's saying good morning. I hope everyone's having a great day. She's ready to go today. Today marks such a special moment as we are transitioning from our 40 by 40 building into our brand new home. We're going to have more space, bigger foyer, a lot more bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Lord knows Praise we the need Lord. them. Yeah. We're going to have an awesome coffee shop. The bookstore is going to be bigger. And of course, we're going to have a much bigger worshiping space. And we cannot wait to get into our new home. It's 4,200 square feet, and it's going to have a lot more space so all our families can come together and worship in one place. More space for more life change. But you know, it's going to take a few weeks um, to get this com completely finished, but we're hoping next week, January 19th, that we'll be granted temporary occupancy so we can go into our new facility and start worshiping together. Now, last week we started a brand new series called 2020 Vision, and if you've missed any of it, go back, check it out on our podcast or our app. Now, normally this is the place where we ask you to grab those checking cards and fill them out, but since we're not on campus, make sure that you are writing a comment below and letting us know that you're watching. <laughs> If we have any prayer requests, make sure that you submit them by a direct message or even comment below because we love praying for you. Now let's jump into part three of 2020 Vision and see what our pastors have in store for us today. So today we are in part three of our current series, 2020 Vision, and we cannot wait to dive in. But before we do, we want to invite you to join us for a road trip to Dallas for the C3 Conference on February 19th and 20th. <laughs> That's right. Every year since 2011, we have attended C3 Conference at Fellowship Church, and it has had a massive impact on our lives, our leadership, and our church. You do not want to miss this life-changing event. Check it out. Everyone, everywhere, engaging in eternity. It's the church. The gates of hell will not prevail against the church. The church will last forever and ever. I'm talking about the church. of our family university shy away from teaching and training our children about the most important thing that they could ever know and understand what a relationship with God is all about. We can grow. We can share our lives together. We can go out and do the work that God wants us to do. It's not our God who is able. It is our God whom we serve. Jesus said, put a new song in our mouth and praise in our heart and others will see what the Lord has done for us and glorify God. Providence is the working of the details of your life and mine. Providence is knowing that God is orchestrating the details of our days and our lives and our encounters and our opportunities that he's actually ordering our footsteps. God isn't just interested in getting you to do something. He wants you to understand that he sees you just like you are and right where you are and he loves you and his prayer for you is that you let him set you free in these days there are people out there who are going to try and take your hope from you but you got to hold on to it and realize if god spoke a vision and a future into your heart no person can take that away from you you don't allow that to happen you let hope rise in your spirit because that's what Jesus puts inside every one of us. I'm going to stand up for Jesus no matter what the cost. It's going to be awesome. So don't put it off any longer. You've heard us mention this for months. This is our yearly church camp for adults getaway. So for those of you who don't see the value in attending this conference, we want to give you our top five reasons for going to C3. Reason number five. You need to get away and you know it. Reason number four, you're gonna have so much fun. 
fun. That's right. Reason number three, you need to bond with other MMC people and make memories that will last right. a lifetime. Reason number two, you will get a fresh perspective on your life and the church. And reason number one, you are going to get on fire for God. You're going to come home and your friends and family are going to watch you burn. That's right. So don't delay. Register today on the church's app or our website. You have seven days before we have to give the hotel our final numbers for our reservation. All right, so we are in week three of our series that we've been calling 2020 Vision. And if we're going to refine our focus and get a clear vision for this year, we have to begin by looking back at what God has already done. If he did it then, he'll do it again. He is faithful. And you know who else is faithful? Our MMC volunteers. Oh my gosh, they're As we amazing. mentioned last Sunday, we kicked out the wall and, and immediately after church just started ripping things apart, getting ready for this transition to have church in yeah. our new home. Check this out. So we just want to say a huge thank you to every volunteer that has been a part this week from those on Sunday to the D-Day. Oh my gosh, we Incredible. had like 30 guys out Incredible. here. And then every day this week, we have had volunteers coming after work and helping be a part of getting us ready to move into our new home. We just want to say a huge thank you. We could not have done it without you. That's right. So guys, we are at a, a monumental moment of transition as a church family. And if you've been with us the last couple weeks throughout maybe even the last two series, we've talked a lot about the children of Israel and Joshua and how they came to a transitional point where they were standing at the Jordan River and they were about to cross and they were about to take possession of the land that God had for them, but they were going to have to fight. And, you know, I believe that's where we're at as a church. We're at a moment of transition. We're standing at our River Jordan and we're about to cross and we're about to see God do amazing things far beyond yeah. what we ever could have possibly imagined. But it's important at this point that we look back and we realize and recognize how faithful, um, how, how completely committed God has been to his vision here and to seeing all of his promises come to pass. So whether you've been attending this church from the very beginning, or maybe you just jumped in in the last few weeks to become a part of this family, you need to know our story That's right. to be able to appreciate where we've been and where we're going, you know, in part and one, see where we're going. in part one, we looked at what God had done in 2019. And if you missed it, go back. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Then last week in part two, we looked at what God did in that 40 by 40 sanctuary with that wheat in the floor and all of the amazing, cool things that he did, all the lives that were changed. But today, we're we are in part journey. three, and we're going to go back to the very beginning. We want to remember before we step into that new building where God has brought us from. Join us on the journey. Giving you a vision. He's birthed an assignment in your heart. Um, it, it's really, really exciting. And, you know, we had many, many, many uh, what I call dream versations uh, about what the church would be like, what it would look like, uh, the kind of culture we would build, the type of people we would attract, what the what the worship would be like, everything. We had, we had it all 
really figured out down to the finest detail in our minds, but we had absolutely no idea where the church was going to be located, you know? So one night on our way home, we had been in Tulsa for a speaking engagement for the college, and I was actually driving and we were headed back on I-44, headed home to Joplin. That's where we lived and went to school. And it was about two o'clock in the morning, and this was in 2001, like in the fall of 2001. And we're driving, and of course, we both fall asleep behind the wheel, so we're both <laughs> extremely tired. And you know, for me, I just want to get home. And we are coming down I-44, and we start seeing these signs, and it says Grove Afton Exit. And we saw one, and then we saw the next one, and Brad said, "Pull off, take this exit." And I said. Have you lost your mind? It's two o'clock in the morning. He said, pull off, take this exit. And I... So this is the actual spot. And this is the sign that we saw that night at two o'clock in the morning. And as you can see, it says Afton Fairland Grove exit. It was on this highway that night that Brad said, pull off right here. And so I pull off reluctantly and we take the exit and we come into, um, into Grove. We get to the toll booth. And Brad said, when we saw that sign, Grove Afton, God said, it's Grove. And I said, it's Grove? Like, it's Grove? Like, we're planting our church in Grove? I said, are you positive? He said, God just spoke to me. This is actually where it all started, right here. Um, believe it or not, this spot that we're standing is where we ended up in a mobile home and Mountain Rivers Church really got started. And we were having daycare Monday through Friday and services on Sunday in our home, just Bible studies. And we started asking God, where do we go from here? I mean, we've got to have a bigger building to grow this church. And so we met with the local school boards. We called the library. We called the senior citizens home. Mm -hmm. Any place that had a big enough open space, even a motel. Yeah, the movie theater. The movie theater. And we tried everything. And there were no doors opening. Most people had had that experience before and unfortunately, they didn't want to let a church come back in. And so we were getting highly frustrated yeah, to say the least. Every door was just slammed shut right And in our Sunday face. mornings were full and it was getting weird because there were so many people packed in our little house. And so we finally got to the point where we just kind of threw our hands up and said, okay, we're done. When you're ready to open a door, you open it and we'll walk through it. Until then, we'll do promised land or daycare and we'll have Bible studies on Sunday. So a little bit of time went by, not very much maybe a couple weeks and that was our prayer and our attitude and this lady came up to me who her and her family owned the land that our mobile home was sitting on and they we were leasing a spot from them and she said hey i know that you guys are looking for a place to have church and my mom is getting ready to move she lived in the house next to our mobile home and she was getting ready to move um, to another town to be with her son and she said that farm home is going to come available and i thought maybe you guys could have church in it. And I'm thinking, yeah, no. But I didn't want to be rude. That, that doesn't get you anywhere in life. So I smiled and I was like, okay, well, thank you. And I'll talk to Brad and you know, we'll let you know. So I went home and I was telling Brad and I was like basically laughing at well, the thought of us having church in this farmhouse. Well, because structurally, I mean, this house was in really, really poor condition. Well, let's I mean, back it up. It had actually been a liquor store, like way, way back. So I'm, we're not really sure when it was built, maybe the 50s or the 60s, but locals will tell us that there was a liquor store there and then they added on to it and it became a home where people lived, but it needed some work. And we weren't looking for a house, we and, were looking for a big building. And the location was, not, was not at all where we believed God wanted us to be. We, we right. God said Grove, so we thought we were supposed to be in Grove, but for some yeah. reason this is the only door that God opened. So, since this was the door God opened and we had prayed, God opened a door and we'll walk through it. It took us a couple weeks to come around and then we made the decision that, you know what, maybe that's not such a bad idea. So we walked in to see this building, this house, for the first time. Let's show you. So this was the house. This is the farmhouse where um, God had opened the door. It was our next step from the mobile home. So a little apprehensive and not super excited, 
we decided that maybe this is where God would want us, even though this is not what we wanted. And so we started looking for an opportunity to remodel it. Because as you can see, this place needed a lot of work. All right, so we we took a look at this uh, at this building, and it was it was in really really rough shape. Um, I'm not much of a carpenter, but even I knew that it needed a lot of work. We had my dad come over, who is a carpenter, he's a contractor, and he came in and kind of looked at everything and was like, "Hey, these walls could go, but you're looking at thousands of dollars," and we're like. We don't have thousands of dollars. Okay, we don't have thousands of dollars. So we were just like, okay, God, it's in your hands. And that was in 2007. Now, if you lived in this area in 2007, or maybe even the Midwest in general, you know that in 2007, there was a huge ice storm that hit our area. And I'm thinking it was like January. I think it was January. It might have been February. But there was this big ice storm. And... You know, when you go through tough times, you don't always realize what God is trying to do. So this is what happened. We come out of our house, and well, first of all, everybody loses power. So the ice storm hits overnight, kind of, and it just continues for days. We lose power, and we come out that first morning to find that a tree had fallen, or big limbs had fallen off of a tree onto our garden shed and smashed everything. Mm -hmm. And we're like, wow, wow. Like we're trying to do something good here for God and we come out and our, our shed is totally smashed. And then we came over um, to where this building was, to the farmhouse, and we were kind of gonna see if anything had happened over here. And we had our van parked under this huge oak tree. Now don't ask me why, we parked our van I know under why. a tree. Because the van, there was ice the van did horrible in the snow. And, oh, that's and where right. we were parked was a place that was going to be a lot easier to, to be able get to get out. to the road, yeah. a lot closer to the road, not, not so far off into the field. And so. This is true because the field at that time, it was a field where our mobile home was. Right. So there was no rock. So we always sunk. Yeah. So that's why. Okay. So we had this giant van. It was a 12 passenger van. And you say, why she in the was world? A beauty. It was because we had been traveling, remember, for years doing kids ministry. So this was our only vehicle at this time. And it was parked under the tree. We came over there and there was another huge limb that had fallen off the oak tree. It had broke the windshield. It had been damaged on the outside of the van. And we are standing there in total disarray, like completely confused as to what God is doing and why in the world, while we're trying to plant a church and trying to get our money together to remodel this building, do you destroy our car and our shed? Mm -hmm. And so what do you do? You trust God, right? So we seriously, we're just like, God, I don't know what you're doing, but you're in control. So we call our insurance company and the adjuster comes out. And when he gets here, he says, hey, you know, you need to get a couple bids on both things, replacement, repairs, yada, yada. Long story short, the damages were $10,000 worth of damages. And both of us in our brains are like, oh, that's $10,000 to remodel a building. That we didn't have. But our shed is trash and our van is trash. Right. Who needs them? Well, we asked the insurance guy because we didn't want to do anything that was wrong. And so I remember Brad asking the insurance agent, literally, he said, hey, this money that we're going to be sent, does it have to go to repair and replace the things that were damaged? And he said, no, it's your money. Like, if you want to drive your van all beat up or you don't want to replace your shed, it's up to you. That's why you pay your insurance. And we were like, wow. Oh, my goodness. So we trashed the shed. Actually, we lived with it being beat up for another couple of years. Right. But we took the van and we did minimal. We had the windshield replaced and I think another broken window on the side and it cost us $1,500. And a friend of ours did it. And we took all the rest of the money and we remodeled the farmhouse. Right. And they came in, we hired this contractor and he came in, him and his crew, and they knocked out walls. And it's amazing what a little bit of paint and some new carpet and you know just a little bit of repairs what it could do to a place and so it took maybe about a month and then we started having services in this building yeah now which gave us so much more room to grow from having a little circle yes. in the living room and you know with the piano 
uh, to being able to really expand the Bible study to become more like a service. Yeah, and so when we moved in here, it was actually September, the first Sunday in September of 2007. The place was remodeled, and we had our very first service. So this was really cool. When we started the project of adding on, we were in the old building, and in 2010, August of 2010, we came out here to nothing but a slab of dirt and we had a groundbreaking service right and started this whole process and even before that i remember you know there was uh on friday nights we we were, we were getting together and, and praying with um with some of the core people of of the congregation and just um praying that god would do amazing things in our midst and praying over local you know uh, families praying over our community just really asking god to be with us and bless uh, you know, the dream that he had birthed in our hearts to advance his kingdom through this church. And I remember one Friday night we were praying and and, uh, and just, you know, the Lord just kind of laid on our hearts to step outside. And, and where we're standing right now, this was all backyard. You know, this was, this would have been kind of the, uh, the back door to the little farmhouse. And it had like a little window, like a tiny little window that you could look out. Right. And I remember walking back and we were looking out the window. Exactly. And um, Jesse Law, which was a person that went here at that time, she was there that night and she was standing next to us. She said, let's just go outside and pray over the ground. And so we came out, it was probably midnight. I mean, we were somewhat crazy. Right. We were hyper we praying. Like, and we walked out and literally like just prayed over this whole ground that's now covered in building. But, you know, when you're in that process, and it's the same thing in your own personal life, when you know that God is about to move, but you're not exactly sure what the next step is, prayer is the answer because God's going to reveal to you exactly what your next step is, and that's what he did for us. So we just stepped out in faith. We knew that God told us that it was time to build. We knew the other building was full. We didn't have all the money it would take, but we had enough. We had just a little, all right? And so to, to we fell. To build a little building. That's right, to the little, little building. So we didn't want to bite off more than we could chew. We felt like a 40 by 60 slab, which would be a 40 by 40 sanctuary, four years bathrooms, coffee shop, would be where we would start. And so we just decided, hey, God, if you're going to lay this on our heart, then we know that you're going to provide everything that we need going forward. And listen. It's the same thing in your life. You may not have everything you need. You may not feel like you are qualified for whatever God's telling you to do. You may not feel like you have the money for what he's asking you to do. But when God speaks, you move. You read it from Genesis to Revelation. When God speaks, he told Abraham, get up, leave the home where you are used to, and you're going to go to a new land that I'm going to show you. He didn't tell him what the route was going to be. He didn't tell him how he was going to do it. He just said, go. And so for us, that was our go. God said, just step out. We had just the money for the slab when we broke ground and brought in the concrete. And the day that we poured the concrete, God does this huge miracle that honestly just built up our faith to know, God, you're never going to leave us. You're never going to forsake us. This is you. So you probably heard this story if you've been around Mountain Movers, but if you haven't, you can't go with us into this next season without hearing this miracle story that happened that day. All right. So Brad, and, and if you don't, if, if you, if you have never seen God do a, a miracle before, or maybe you're somebody like you're, you're not in the church you don't even, you're questioning even God's existence, but you're just deep down, you're saying, God, I dare you just to show me that you're real. Just show me a sign. Prove to me, God, that, that, you, that you really, really are here. This story, if this doesn't, if this doesn't convince you that, that there is, that God is up to something supernatural yeah. here at Mountain Movers Church, I don't know what is. This is a cool story. So the day we were pouring the concrete, we're standing out in the middle of the slab, the concrete's wet. I'm in my rubber boots. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just right in the middle of it. And as we're standing there, I remember just looking out across the wet concrete and I saw in my mind a harvest field. Now let me explain what that means and, and why I would have seen something like that. In Matthew uh, chapter nine, it starts I think at verse 36, Jesus, is looking over uh, Jerusalem, uh, and he is. The Bible says that he is broken with compassion because he sees the people, uh, the the people that he was about to die for, and it says that he was broken, he was moved, he was com 
completely wrecked because he realized mm -hmm. that they were sheep like sheep without a shepherd. Totally and lost. then he goes on to talk about how we as the church need to pray that God, who is the God of the harvest, would send forth laborers and leaders to bring the harvest in and help people to make heaven their home. So there's this metaphor that Matthew brings into the picture as he's quoting Jesus, and, and he uses the harvest field as this metaphor. So the harvest field are people that come to Christ and make heaven their home. So as I'm standing out in the middle of the concrete and I see this harvest field, I'm seeing a wheat field in my heart, in my mind, in my spirit. And I just say it. I just said, I see a harvest field. And that was it. There was nothing more. Because for us, we, we went knew on. that all that really mattered is that we brought people to Christ. All that we came here to do and our heart has always been is to just help people to have a real relationship That's with Christ. Right. So as we're pouring concrete, we don't know what we're doing. We have these couple longs <laughs> in our hands. Right. We're out there like looking like we know what we're doing right. and we don't. And we're just like praying and we're really overwhelmed with God. What is it you're doing? Like, why did you bring us out into the middle of nowhere? But it's exciting and scary all wrapped up right. in one. All and right? I like what you said because it's never been about mm -hmm. a building. Never. It's never been about a building. It's not about a building now. It will nope. never be about a building but about building people. That's right. And so our hearts uh, follow hard after what Christ is crazy about, and that's taking hurting, hopeless, helpless people and giving them hope. That's right. And his name is Jesus. So later on, the concrete's drying, and the guys are out there with their trowel machines, and they're, they're, they're polishing the top of the surface, making it nice and smooth because our plan was to stain the concrete. And they came to us and they said, hey, we've got a problem. You need to check this out really, really quick. They said there are seeds, like sunflower seeds or something in the mix. We think maybe because our little four babies were running around. They and, thought it was our kids. They, thought, they blamed it on our kids. I don't know how they got thrown under the bus, <laughs> but they said your kids threw some, some sunflower seeds or something in the mix. you got to go check it out because it's drying. And so we went over there. Misty's dad grabbed his pocket knife, and he began to dig out seeds from the mix. But they were not they sunflower weren't, seeds. They weren't sunflower and seeds. And it wasn't our kids. And it wasn't our kids, yeah. So we got to looking closely and we realized that this is wheat grain. And we're looking around, we're scratching our heads. We're like, where on earth did wheat grain, did come, wheat from? grain come from? Like, how would have wheat grain just been dumped in this one spot? And we, we got to looking and examining a little bit more closely to the mix. And we realized that it wasn't just there in that spot, but it was it was all over. We start pacing around the perimeter of the pad and we realize that this wheat grain, while they're polishing the surface, it is rising all over the place to the top, all yeah. over the place. It's rising. It's coming up. It's surfacing. And, and right to where the, the wall, the back wall of the sanctuary was going to be built, the wheat stopped. So this is the part. This okay, is the so part. hold on. So hold on. <laughs> so I told you it was a 40 by 60 slab. Right. Okay? So literally it's like God took his finger and he drew a line. There's a 20 foot by 40 foot section that was going to be coffee shop, foyer, and bathrooms. And there wasn't any wheat. There was grain. no wheat there. There was none. And we kept walking back and forth thinking it's going to surface back here too. And that's actually where we're standing right now. And it, it never did. And so the 40 by 40 like, what is going was on? covered in wheat grain so much so that we ended up not staining the floor because we were afraid, you know, it was going to pit out. We weren't sure how that would end up working out. So we end up covering it with carpet. Okay. But as you know, demo day was Monday. And the one thing that Brad and I have been looking forward to for years. We've talked about it for years. You've heard us tell the story. I'm getting chills right now telling you because all we wanted to see was the is wheat. the wheat grain <laughs> still in the concrete because we're not crazy. We saw it that day, but we want you to be able to see it. And so we start pulling back that carpet and freaking out. And Brad even was on his hands and his knees. Like, guys, right look at this. Because we're look lying. at all the wheat. There's wheat. And yeah, some of it, it you know, had stuck it's to that de glue. Decomposed. Some of it's gone, just pits. But, but listen to me. There's still wheat there's grain. There's still wheat in the floor. And we want you to see the wheat grain. We want you to see the miracle that God did. Because listen, it's not just what God did here. And it wasn't just one time. And it wasn't just this church. That's who God is. God is a God who is all about telling you to step out in faith. Of and promises. then 
giving you a promise and giving you a miracle to hold on to. So when the going get, gets tough, you look back and you remember, God, you told us this was a harvest you field. You promised. You promised you, promise. you would provide. And guys, he'll do the same thing in your life. Whatever God is telling you to do in 2020, whatever that new vision is, he's clearly trying to lay out for you. God is going to give you everything you need, but he's not going to lay it out for you to see clearly right now. He may only give you your next step. He's not going to make it easy. And when you get to that step, he's going to show you your next step and your next step and your next step. And then you're going to be able to look back, which is what we've been doing in this whole series. And we're looking back and remembering and being overcome with God's presence and God's power to say, God, you did all of that then. Are you not going to do so much more now as we move in to our new home, that 4,200 square foot space, which is still not huge. And guys, one day it will be kids church, right? We're so <laughs> excited about what God's going to do. And who knows what he has in store. But we do know this. His heart is the harvest. So we're going to show you the miracle that was in the making that day. All right, so this is the moment that so many of you have been waiting for. We can't wait to show you this. Now, when you come to church on January 19th, you're going to look down in this new foyer, and you're going to see these pits all over the concrete. That's the wheat grain. That's right. Now, there's some spots where it's decomposed. There's other spots where, after all these years, the wheat grain still remains. And so we're going to show you one of those spots right now. So the spot we're getting ready to show you, this is actually so cool. It is right under the altar space in the corner. And so it's where so many people just cried and prayed and poured their hearts out to God. And underneath that, who knew that that is where this massive cluster of wheat and God's promise actually was. Check it out. All right, so here you go for all you doubters. <laughs> Look at all that wheat grain. Look it's at all there. those kernels. So cool. See how close I can get for you. That's unbelievable. This is just packed with wheat. Look at that one. Just amazing. And you know, when I, when I look at each one of these uh, pieces of grain, I just think that that represents a person. Right that has come through these doors. And we figured recently that since this building was built, over 4,000 people have heard the gospel preached. They've heard about the good news of Jesus Christ. Many hundreds and hundreds of people have come to Jesus here in the middle of rural Nowhereville, mm -hmm. all because of the, the promises of Almighty God, because he said, I'm gonna bring people from the north, south, east, and west, and I'm going to give them hope. And so, as I just want you, as you're looking at this grain, I want you to pick one of these pieces of grain out and just look at it. And I want you to realize, if you have been attending this church and you gave your life to Christ in this sanctuary, I want you to realize that that piece of grain represents you. You were in this place. You heard the message of hope preached. The Holy Spirit dealt with your heart. And you came to him in a real and life-changing way. For those of you that are watching this video and, and, and you have not figured out what that real and life-changing relationship looks like, I want you to realize that one of these pieces of wheat represents what God wants to do in you. That's right. This is your moment. This is your time. Realize that the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart's door and he wants you to come to part one, we talked about how in order to see ahead clearly, we have to look back. And that's what we've been doing. And it's been an amazing journey. I hope you've enjoyed it this morning. But you know, now we are at the end of that journey and we are now stepping over that threshold into this new season. And as I think about being able to see clearly what God is about to do, I think about the fact that I happen to be personally nearsighted. And if you don't know what that means, it means that I can't see things that are that far away. So if I really want to see, even right now, I need to get really, really close. So that's why we don't let you drive at night, because <laughs> we're afraid that we might die. Actually, it's kind of true. So she I have... can't see. So I have glasses, but I never wear them. Like I actually pray every time I go to get a new driver's license <laughs> that when I'm taking it, that they don't like make me mark on you. there that I have to wear them because honestly, I can see so long as I get close enough. And listen, this is what I want you to see today, okay? If you can't see clearly what God is doing, it's because you're not close enough. 
The Bible says in James, and I want to read this to you because it is so good. This A couple days ago as I was praying about this message in particular, God just like dropped this in my mind. Missy, you're nearsighted. you got to get close to me. James 4 and 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near a promise. to you. It's a promise. Yeah. And then look what Jeremiah says. Jeremiah was a prophet in the Old Testament and he's prophesying to the children of Israel in Jeremiah 29, verse 12 through 14. Listen to what it says. Then, this is a promise, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Listen to me. This is God saying, look, if you'll just take the time out of your schedule, out of your busy, crazy life, if you'll just take the time to draw near to me, get on your knees and pray, I will listen to you. Then he goes on in verse 13, and you will seek my face and you will find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Guys, this is a promise that God is saying, I wanna show you. I have got incredible things planned for your life. I've got incredible things for your family and for your future. I want to show you these things. And as we said before, he's not gonna lay it all out, but he's gonna give you one step at a time. But that's only gonna happen if you will take the time to draw close to God. And that's why we're doing this 21 day God first challenge. I hope mm -hmm. you've jumped on and if you haven't, why not start today? It's not too late. It's not too late. Put God first. Take time to spend in your word every day and spend a little time in worship and spend that few minutes in prayer seeking the face of God and asking God to draw near to you because I'm telling you, God wants to do some crazy, crazy amazing things in, in your life year. in this new year. Yeah. Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and one translation says heavy laden or tired tired i will give you rest another way of saying this is hey for those of you that are sick and tired of being sick and tired mm -hmm. you've just you've tried doing things your own way Not you've tried well. you've tried it you've tried your plan and it just hasn't Didn't worked work. yeah and you realize it. You've come to a point to where you're like, my hands are, are just, I, I'm throwing them up in the air. I'm done. So, you know, so we say it this way. A lot of times you have to hit rock bottom. You know, in order to look up, you got to land flat on your back. Sometimes that's the way God has to deal with us. Mm -hmm. He's had to be that way with me so many times in my life because we're stubborn and we, uh, really, we're stupid. We're stubborn <laughs> and stupid. And we're slow learners. We admit it. We, sometimes, we are as well. Sometimes yeah. we just, we don't learn very quickly. And God just has to slam us on our back yeah. so that we look up and say, God, I'm, I'm done. I submit. <laughs> you know, I submit to your, yeah. your plan. I'm done trying to do my own thing. And so he says, come to me, all of you who are tired of being tired. And here's his promise. Are you ready? I will give you rest. And so when I think about that, in order to come to him, mm -hmm. that must mean that you're far from him. Right. It must mean that you're, that you're nearsighted. Yep. And you need to come closer to him. That's if you right. want to know what he has for you, who he wants you to be, what he wants you to do. If you want to know what his promises are, if you want to know what those things are that he has for you and your family to possess, you got to get close. Get close to God. And you right. will realize how faithful he is. You'll realize how big his plans are and that his promises, they really are true, like that wheat in the floor. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you today, get close to God. Go after God with everything you are. Last week we said, if you want God to go before you, if you want him to pave the way, then go after him. If you want God to go before you, go after God. That's, right. That's what we're challenging you to do in this series. If you want to get a clear focus, if you want to refine your focus and get a clear vision, 2020 vision for the year 2020 with clarity. Come on. That's right. Then you got to get close to God. Go yes. after God with everything that you are. So we just want to pray for you today. We just want to pray that God would help you to, to find that right positioning in him so that you can understand everything that he wants you to see with clarity. Yes. All right, let's pray. Father, we just love you and we thank you, God, for each and every piece of wheat person that is watching today. 
in their jammies, with their family online. God, we are praying in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit would just fill that living room or that car or that, that break room at work, wherever they are today watching online. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit would just overwhelm them, God, and show them how real you really are. And God, we specifically pray for those that are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Help them to look back look back at this year and, and to look back at, at, at throughout their life at how faithful you have been, how you've been trying to get their attention. You've given them opportunities to know you and, and to, to follow hard after you. And I pray, God, as we look back that you would just help each and every one of us, God, to realize how faithful you are. If you've been faithful then, you're gonna be faithful again. We can trust you. Your promises are true. Help us, each and every one of us, God, watching today to just be able to look forward with clarity as we draw close to you and see what you have for us, what you want for us, who you want us to be. Give us 2020 vision in 2020. We love you, we thank you. Continued with heads bowed and eyes closed, I, I want to speak to that person. You would say, you know, when, when you were showing us those pieces of wheat grain in the floor and you said this might be you if you have not experienced that real and life changing relationship with Jesus, this is what he wants to do with you and in you. I wanna to speak to your heart right now. On behalf of Almighty God, he is calling you to come close. He is drawing you close to him, to know him in a real way, not religion, but relationship. He's knocking on your heart's door and he's saying, if you will only just admit that you need me, <laughs> You know you need me. Believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he, that he died, that he went in that grave and he came up to life on the third day. He was resurrected and, and you can be resurrected with him as you confess him as Lord of your life today. Will you do that? Will you do that right now? If you're watching and you wanna make that decision, I wanna encourage you to comment below in the comment section below and we want to pray and agree with you. We wanna know who you are. Direct message the church. We wanna know who you are. So we're just gonna walk you through this prayer, okay, right now. We're just gonna pray this prayer as you um, make this life-changing relationship a reality right now. Father, Thank we you. pray right now, God, for each individual watching, for those that wanna make this relationship happen with you. We pray, God, that you would just receive them now as they call upon the name of Jesus and make you Lord of their lives in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 That is absolutely the best decision you will ever make in your entire life. And if you made that decision, we have a gift for you and we will send it to you tomorrow morning in the mail. It's called our Next Step Kit. It's got a brand new Bible and it's got a message from Brad and I that is going to help you to know, what do I do next? next. All right. So just direct message us your address. It'll be in the mail in the morning. It is so amazing to see all that God has done. It's crazy, really. But he has moved so many mountains, and you know, he wants to do the same thing in your life. And it all starts by going after God first. In 2020, we started a 21-day God First Challenge, where we challenged you to spend the first 15 minutes of your day with God. And you know, it really has been amazing. There's no better way to renew your mind and transform your day than giving God that first part of your day. And really, the same is true in your finances. So in this 21 day God first challenge, we challenge you to give your first back to God by bringing your tithe to God first. And if you're not familiar with what the tithe is, tithe is simply 10% of everything you make, you bring your first 10th back to God. But really this is your time to experience for yourself what God wants to do for your life in 2020, the mountains and the impossibilities that God wants to move. So will you give your first back to God for these 21 days? There's two ways that you can give this morning. You can text MMC to 77977, or you can give through our website. Simply click on the Give tab in the menu bar, and you'll be good to go. Hey, some announcements for this week. Midweek services kick back off this week. Tuesday is online over only with life groups, but Wednesday, come out on the campus. We've got the local food truck will be on campus this Wednesday to help us kick off the midweek services. They'll be serving tacos and burgers, and they'll start at 5.30 for midweek services this week. So make sure you're being a part of a life group or Kidsplosion or Accelerate this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Let's pray. 
God, we love you. We thank you so much for the opportunity just to spend time together as a family and jammies. And also just to understand, look back and see all that you're able to do. God, I know that you want to do exceedingly abundantly more than we can ever think or imagine. And thank you so much for the mountains you're going to move in 2020. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us today for this special online only edition of Families and Jammies. We hope mountains were moved in your life today so you can walk out God's purpose tomorrow. Have a great week.